thanks. Uh, so hi, my name is uh, Michal Trojanowski, and uh, I'm a senior uh, software developer at Allegro. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware with, uh, with Allegro, but uh, in Poland, it's uh, the biggest uh, shopping platform. Uh, we've got around 6 million users, and uh, daily we sell around 1 million products. Uh, we're mainly a um, um, marketplace, but we've got also auctions available. And since 2015, we also uh, run our own e-tail branch. Uh, we're actually quite a big company in Poland with uh, almost 700 people working just in IT. And uh, because we're a, uh, we're a marketplace, uh, it's essential that we provide an API for, um, for our sellers. And uh, we currently support two versions of the API. So we've got a legacy SOAP API, and so uh, we're continuously uh, replacing it with, uh, with the REST API. We've got around 30,000 sellers actively using, uh, using the APIs. And in our busiest uh, hours, uh, each of the APIs serves around 100,000 requests uh, the, the SOAP API is mainly used by, uh, by our third-party integrators, while the, uh, the REST API is also used uh, by, by ourselves, by our front-ends and mobile devices. I'm part of the, the API team, and uh, our team serves two main purposes in, uh, um, in our company. So, um, we develop and maintain the, the, gate, the API gateways, both SOAP and, and REST. And we also serve um, as a help for the other developer, developer teams uh, in designing uh, the resources that they want to expose through, through the APIs, either to the integrators or, um, or to our own frontends or mobile apps. We help them design the models or the paths used um, and stuff like that. So um, around 2014, um, there was a decision made in Allegro to move from uh, a PHP monolith to service-oriented architecture with uh, microservices uh, written mainly in Java, but also Kotlin, Node.js, and a couple of uh, other languages. And um, this, of course, created a need to, uh, for an API gateway. Uh, so the API team uh, created a list uh, to, uh, to check what's available on the market. And um, we made a list of all the products and all the, um, uh, all the technologies that were available then. And remember, it's January 2014. So this list would probably look uh, pretty much differently today. But uh, that was what... Uh, what we are working with uh, at that time. And uh, we also created a list of features that we wanted, uh, that we knew that we'll need in our API gateway, uh, features that we knew we'll need upfront, and uh, some of other features that, um, that we knew that we'll want to integrate at some point uh, in our final product. Um, an absolute showstopper for us was the support for discovery service because uh, we had an inbuilt uh, discovery service at that time, um, or, or house-built uh, discovery service at that time, with an HTTP API. And it was very important for us that, that our gateway will work with our service discovery. And interestingly enough, um, we couldn't find a product that uh, would easily work with such a service discovery in, uh, this, uh, this few years ago. Um, but uh, we compared all the features with, all the, with the list of the products that, and the technologies that we had. And uh, after the analysis, we, we came to a conclusion that, in fact, most of these items you can, you can divide into two groups. So you, you either have an API manager uh, for, uh, mm, for publishing uh, um, a ready, available, or finished product, uh, with the support of, uh, of automatic, automated uh, documentation, uh, client uh, registration, client accountability, and so more, um, more like a business stuff. And on the other hand, you had API proxies, which were more technical with uh, features like rate limiting, 
uh, payload modification, um, authentication, stuff like that. And uh, there were not many that, uh, that would fall into both groups. And if they were, they were usually paid products. And unfortunately, our business said that with our traffic load, they don't want to go to a, uh, to a paid solution. Um, and we knew that uh, at first we needed an API proxy. Uh, but uh, as we wanted to expose uh, the new API also to our third-party integrators, we are aware of the fact that at some time we'll also need the features of an API manager. So uh, we decided to go with, with a do-it-yourself solution, and we chose Undertow uh, with, uh, with its proxy handlers as the um, as their underlying technology for, for the API gateway. So currently we have a service which we call Edge Server, and it's using, using Undertow and uh, the proxy handler. Uh, we have Zookeeper where we keep uh, our configuration. And we also use Couchbase uh, for, for rate limiting purposes. The, um, this one service um, is used by both our, um, our internal, in internal traffic, so mobile devices and desktops, uh, and also by, by our third party integrators. Internally, uh, it's a chain of uh, HTTP handlers, and um, each handler, uh, HTTP handlers, the, the undertow handlers, and each handler has uh, different um, um, serves, the, serves different purpose, like adding some metrics or uh, handling sessions, handling auth tokens, stuff like that. And finally, it goes to the proxy handler, which uh, proxies the, the request to the underlying service. We also use quite extensively uh, response listeners, uh, which, um, uh, which can modify the, the uh, incoming uh, response, like modify some headers on the response and um, add some final logging or metrics and stuff like that. We're actually um, quite satisfied with, uh, with the product. Uh, it's been with us uh, on production for uh, around four years. Uh, we managed to get a 120 milliseconds uh, average overhead on all our uh, endpoints that we use uh, at P99. And we are aware of the fact that it's not um, probably like the best you can get on the market. But for our purposes, it's quite okay. And as we are a, a marketplace company, the latency is not that important. Uh, it's rather the, the resources that we use, the amount of resources that we use. <clears throat> As we chose a do-it-yourself solution, we had to implement all the different features that you'd uh, normally find in an API, uh, API manager or, or an API proxy. We had to implement it ourselves, so we had to make some decisions on how we want to do some, uh, some of that stuff. So for routing, uh, we, chose, uh, uh, we chose to use a Git repository and uh, keep the, uh, the whole configuration of the routes in, uh, in a JSON file. And um, it proved to be an, uh, an easy, simple way for our developers to, uh, to expose any new resources uh, to, to the public. Um, but on the other hand, it gives us, the API team, uh, quite a good amount of control of what's, uh, what is being exposed. Uh, so um, we can check uh, if somebody isn't you know, uh, trying to expose uh, some, some mm, stuff that we wouldn't like to, to be there. Uh, especially when, uh, mm, when our developers want to add a resource that will be available to our third-party integrators and a feature that will be documented on our, on our developers portal. They have to tag it uh, with the additional tag public. Uh, so then we, uh, we do some uh, more thorough review of such an endpoint and check the, the model that is used, uh, and check the path, if it complies with, uh, <clears throat> with our uh, guidelines. We've got, a, we've got a couple of security features um, in, incorporated into the API gateway. Uh, we do... Uh, mm, we check the val val validity of uh, the auth tokens. Uh, so uh, our developers uh, don't have to think about it when, uh, when they develop the microservices. 
and they have a traffic going through Edge Server. They know that the auth tokens that they get, uh, they're not expired, and uh, they have uh, mm, correct signatures. <clears throat> we also added uh, session support for our own pages. Mm, whenever we get a request with a session cookie from, from our front ends, we exchange the session cookie for an auth token, so we don't have to send uh, cookies uh, inside our architecture. We added a centralized built-in support for CARS and CSRF. Mm -hmm. We also think that uh, it's, um, it's more secure that our developers don't have to uh, implement it uh, themselves uh, in the in these microservices. So uh, um, by default, we allow uh, only uh, CARS requests from our own domains uh, without any credentials. But uh, if the developers want to, uh, want to have a request uh, that accepts credentials, they have to add uh, additional piece of configuration to, to the Git repository um, where they can say that, OK, the, we allow credentials or we want to expose some additional headers. So. <clears throat> uh, we have the documentation. Uh, for the documentation, we use Swagger. Mm, and at first, uh, we wanted to have it made automatically. So uh, this is documentation for our, uh, our public resources. So, so that's, a, uh, that's a web page for our uh, third-party integrators with all the resources that they can use. And so whenever we had a service that would expose such a public endpoint, uh, it, it was also supposed to expose a Swagger YAML file. And then we had a separate microservice which would go through all, the, uh, all these services, take all the Swagger YAML, YAML files, and um, uh, put them in one big file um, and put it, put the, put it on this, uh, this web page. But uh, we ran into a problem that um, in Swagger, you can use references to models, and you don't use namespaces. So when we had many different developers uh, add the documentation, they started using the same names for the, for the models. So we ended up with wrong documentation because uh, we had you know, wrong models used in, in, uh, in different places. So now we moved to a separate repository where we just keep the, the Swagger YAML file and edit it uh, manually. We also use uh, rate limiting. And um, we've got uh, two different types of this rate limiting. It uses, in, in both cases, it uses Couchbase. Um, one is more technical, uh, where we rate limit based on IPs. So it's more kind of an anti-DDoS anti thing. And uh, we also got uh, rate limiting, uh, which is more business-like, where uh, we can limit uh, the um, we can add minute and daily limits on uh, resources based on our clients. We can um, segregate clients into different groups. So when we have an, uh, a verified client or he is a VIP, we, uh, we can give them uh, much higher limits to some of our resources than to, to other clients. <clears throat> Was it worth it? We think that yes. Um, it was built in a relatively short time. Uh, it took our team uh, less than three months to, to have an MVP ready in production. And once it was going, it it's does, does its job uh, pretty well. And it contains all the necessary features that we needed, needed in our company. And it blends with our architecture and our uh, microservice ecosystem very well and uh, integrates with some of our tools that we created. So, so that's, the, that's the plus of it. And whenever we lack any new features, uh, it's quite easy to develop them, because we built it ourselves, and we know the code base. And um, it's Java and Undertow, so it's, nothing, you know, it's not a technology that is, um, that is sophisticated. So it's quite easy to, um, to add any new features. The question of this, of, this, of this presentation, the topic, was should you build your own solution? And of course, the answer to such questions, as usually, is it depends. 
Um, if, uh, if your needs are not so sophisticated and you don't have any custom needs and uh, any features that you can find in, in the readily available products, um, we think that it would be easier for you to, to, to just take whenever, uh, whenever it's, it's available on the market, especially if you need it very fast. So you don't have a couple of months or a couple of weeks. You have a, a readily available service and you want an API gateway. So just go whenever, it's, uh, whatever is uh, available. And of course, it's usually easier to maintain. Um, whether you take a paid solution or uh, you take something which is open source, because then usually you have the support of the community, so uh, uh, people can answer questions when, whenever, uh, whenever something arises. But uh, if you feel that you know, you're big enough that uh, the, the traffic is so, so big that it would, um, it would be better for you not to, to you know, um, buy any, anything outsourced, or, uh, or you want to have a total, total control of the features, mm, I would say don't be afraid to build one because uh, it's not that difficult to build an API proxy and add uh, those features that, that you would need. Or if you have an architecture that you know, has some um, different, um, um, yeah, you, you need some features that are not, not that common, then, uh, then go with, uh, with building uh, one yourself. Just remember it's, you know, doesn't have the support of the communities, or it's not that it's costless because you have to maintain it, and uh, you usually need a team that will that will you know uh, look after it. It's not that you know you take you take a team for three months, build it, and it will sit there and everything will be okay. So so you have to remember you know all the pros and cons of of it. Uh, we sometimes think, uh, think uh, whether we would do it again, uh, given that you know the um, uh, the market has changed quite a quite quite a bit so for the for the last four years or so, and uh, we still think that yes, um, because uh, because of the of the ecosystem of our microservices, um, because of the tools that we have. And especially because of, uh, of the fact that we use the internal and public uh, resources and we want, to, um, mm, we want to treat them a bit separately and have different features for, for those different resources, we still think that, that we, we would do it again. But uh, if we were to do it today, I think we would go with Spring Cloud Gateway and WebFlex, so a, a bit modern, modern technology than uh, what we did um, previously. And that's it from me. Thank you for, uh, for listening. Um, here are some links for, for our blog. Uh, we write some, some stuff about, about the technologies that we use at Allegro. Um, if, you want, uh, if you have any comments, you can come to me or write on the, on the Twitter. Um, I'll be glad to help. And of course, there are the Q&A session afterwards. Yeah, thanks.